What is going on, everybody? Justin here at ICAST 2022, hanging out with Mark Mills at the Daiwa booth, talking about Daiwa reels. I've got a BG in my hands, the OG BG, and I have this BGMQ in Mark's hands. And I got a question I want to ask you, Mark. Yep. What's the best reel, a BG or a BGMQ? Dude, you always want to set me up, man. Justin sets me up all the time. That's a tough question, especially sitting in the Daiwa booth, meeting Daiwa. But you know what? They're both really good reels. Um, I, I, the BGMQ is a little bit better, I know but it's going to cost a little bit more. Right. And there's some better features. Yeah. So before we dive into that, we want to assess something. Yeah. It's not about best, right? Like I, I yeah. knew you'd hear it and you'd be like, ah, it's about, it can't say <laughs> best, right? Because it's about application. It's about price point. Right. It's about what everybody's going to be doing. And I own both of these. You've beat to death both of these in your arsenal. Right. And you have certain times where you'll lean towards saying, hey, I kind of want to use a BG. There's certain reasons for using a BG and based on the features of what it offers at that price point. And then for those that want to jump up to the BGMQ, there's justifiable reasons that I think when people see both reels, they want to know what's the difference? Yeah. What am I getting out of a BG and what would I be getting out of a BGMQ if I jumped up to that price point? So Most people think it's just because it's gold and silver or something of that nature. You know, color is the first thing that people gravitate to, yeah. but they don't know all that little stuff that we go into on these reels. So this will be fun. Well, let's let's start with the BG. So yeah. this reel has been around, this rendition has been six around. Six years. Six years. Yep. I've owned 2,500s. I've owned the 4,500s for bigger game fishing, like tarpon. I've even got my biggest kingfish on this right. reel, like a 40-pounder. Um, had it in my arsenal for a couple years. Ended up giving it to my brother, and I moved over to the BGMQ. This has taken a beating. It's impressive. What it can handle and how much it can take. I mean, a lot of guides around Florida have their boats loaded down with this reel. Well, one, the BT was a huge name well before that reel. And it was, you know, when we came out with that six years ago, we scared a lot of people because they love the old BGs. So before that, oh, we had afraid the old, of something new. afraid yeah. of something new because they're like, oh, I don't know, new things. But we've made so many big improvements um, that I'm sure you're going to go through and I can go through it with you that really changed the market. And it took about a year for people to jump on board and they they found out that this is an amazing reel and it, it fit in a great product price category for mainly guides and deckhands and stuff like that because it was affordable and it was rock solid. Yes. And when I mean rock solid, not just the, the features and the price, but it lasted on the boats for months, weeks, years at a time. Something happened in the industry when this came out around that time. People started to notice some refinement yeah. in reels. Yep. Sizing and body materials started to get a little more compact. Things started to feel a little more smooth when you turn the handle. Right. And the big thing for the BG that I noticed was right. the digi-gearing system. Yes. It was a bigger main gear, deeper cut teeth, better alignment between the teeth and the pinion gear. And for it being a, a pretty rock solid aluminum reel, it was still really smooth. Yeah, it was very smooth. Um, we're using a you know a big zinc gear mm -hmm. um, because you gotta keep the price to where it is, the price yeah. is zinc. Yeah. Um, but it was about, when, when we compared it to the competition in the same price point range, um, it was about a 30 to 40% larger gear, you know, if you ever done, which is a lot. So when you get that bigger gear, you tend to get more durability. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and the smoothness is all digitally cut, digi gear. Yeah. Um, but it was a digitally cut and, and mesh gear system that made it very smooth. And that bigger gear and those bigger gear teeth at the time allowed it to have the durability it needed, you know, both turning the handle here, but actually even under load and under high stress pressures of, you know, heavy drag pressure, 22, 23, 25 pounds of drag. Wow. Like that. That's, yeah, that's beefy. Yeah. What else, man? I believe on this series, we have the air rotor incorporated into yes. that as well, right? Well, what is the air rotor design? What's its purpose? So the air rotor design is to really... Uh, alleviate the weight of the rotor uh, as much as you can and still keep balance okay so one the weight of the rotor the heavier the rotor is let's let's lay it out there the heavier the rotor is probably going to make the reel way more yes but the big thing is that the, the heavier the rotor it acts harder to turn the handle over long periods of time it's still smooth but it keeps rolling so we want to try and lower, lighten the rotor up one to lighten the reel and two lighten the rotation yeah. So it's easier to turn the handle, physically easier to turn the handle. I, 
again, I've, I've had the bigger BGs, and if I wanted to take somebody tarpon fishing, red snapper fishing, uh, even I've caught my biggest blackfin, 25 pounds on a vertical jig on the 4,500 size. Right. It has done so much for me. It was a workhorse. That's what led me to take a look at the BGM cube. When you jump up into the BGM cube, what makes it different? What is the BGM cube? And I mean, we're talking about a $120 price point to about a $200. So well, in the higher ones, 279 in the, the bigger size. Right, right. So what are you getting when you jump up into that? So what you're getting is, um, if, if, if you look at this, you're looking at, well, I think one, two, three, four screw-in points here. Um, all those screw-in points where you, you have on your side plate here, you have a side plate that peels off. And those are all different stress points. If a screw side plate's looser than others, it's just like on the head of a car yeah. that, you know, it doesn't sit right, which can affect the gearing and everything. But for the most part, in order to put those in there, we had to have to add material, which adds weight, but it also takes away of gear space. You can keep that same gear, but you're going to have to have more frame. So it's heavier, it gets heavier. It gets heavier yeah. and bulkier. Um, and then, like we were just talking, they, sometimes less material is stronger. So on the BGMQ, there are no areas for that. We use a 360 degree disc that keeps everything in precise alignment. It's just like a jar, so when you tighten it down, it's better for keeping water out of the gear set. But also, this is the whole gear. If you were to pull this off, this isn't just a beauty plate. This is actually the size of the gear. There's no extra, look at all this extra room here. Yeah. There's no extra room. This reduces weight a lot, and like I just said, Less equals more. More durability, better rigidity, better engineering, um, and better stability. Keeping the gears in precise alignment, keeping water out, lightening the reel. Those are all really big points. It still has the same gear ratio, and I think we're at 6.2 if I'm not mistaken on this, but this has a bigger gear, so even though you have the same inches per crank, 6 to 1 gear ratio, you've got, it's easier to turn the handle when it's under load, bringing in a fish, retrieving a lure, so it's going to be easier on you as a human to turn the handle with the same gear ratio because of the bigger gearing, just more leverage. That makes sense. So, yeah. so again, bigger gears, deeper cut teeth translates to more winching power went under a load. Yep, exactly. Okay. Got it. Um, what about that. in terms of sealing? So this has been to hell and back. I, I love my BG. I jumped up to the BGMQ 6000 because I was able to get a little bit of weight reduction and right. still kind of do what my 4500 BG did. Right. So tackle some pretty big fish. I've had mine for a little over a year. Haven't needed to do anything other than spray down with light fresh water rinse after the day. And yep. I feel like a lot of sealing went into making that MQ, this MQ series. In, in all actuality, there's not a lot of ceiling in this reel, uh, in the in the regular BT, because we have to hit a price point, you know, yeah. 129 uh, on the price point. Which is surprising, because it's been, this has been through so much already. It is. So, what seals are put into this? So, we actually use, I believe there's nine rubber seals in this. I think you've got one or two down this way. Um, you've got a seal around this edging here, and I believe you have a seal right around this back edging here, this beauty area. So, and then there's, like I said, there's a few in here. There's, I believe, a seal here and also a seal there. And those are rubber seals. Um, and that really keeps a lot of the spray, you know. Inshore wise, not too bad. You're not getting much, but any of the offshore reels really take a hit. I mean, when it's windy and it's blowing off the side of your boat, you know, down the gunnels and stuff, you can see. So that, those are, the rubber sealing really kind of supports that on that. These reels originally came out in summer 2020, and they had them in the bigger sizes, the 5,000, 6, 8, 10, yeah, and bigger. wise. And we were building bigger ones. The yeah. Took a little more time. What I was excited about was a friend of mine, Adam Fisk with Los Amuzos, he was fishing some of the bigger BGMQs and he said, man, these things, they've got some really big yellowfin tuna on them. Oh, and yeah. when I found out they were going to come out with a smaller inshore size yeah. or even freshwater size ones, I realized that might even be a little over engineered because there's a lot of seals that are on that little inshore reel. Right. I own two BGMQ 3000s. And it's a bold statement, but it's it's one of the best reels I've ever owned in my life. Like it's it's really impressive. Thank you very much. So I appreciate that. It's very that. cool. I think at the end of it all, like the, the price point jump to the BGMQ yep. is justifiable. You are getting uh, uh, honestly a bigger gear for the body size. You're going to have some weight savings, so you can you know not have to get fatigued as much going with and, a bigger. And even class if you reel. have a bigger gear, the weight savings.
means you're getting on the frame is going to make up for the weight of that bigger gear. Right, so there's, right. you get some pluses in, uh, out of that as well. And you get a much better sealed reel. So yes. if you're a little, you know, lackadaisical with cleaning yep. and rinsing down your stuff and you're not as attentive to things and babying it and putting it inside a temperature, you know, controlled environment, right. um, this is probably going to be the, the play, right? Yeah, no doubt about yeah. it. And, and it's been proven for the last, you know, basically two, two and a half years. Um, everybody likes to do testing. Yeah, we case tested it for X amount of years. We tested two or three of them. Everybody tries to do it. Now you've got some true it's guide time on them. Yeah. The, and, and lots of them. Both of them are really good. But you've got some guide time on them. Yeah. And, you know, that, that always... Even as a manufacturer, we're like, oh, we tested the reels, went out, we fished them for a year, and we've had three or four of them out there. Not where we've had, you know, 30, 40, thousand reels out there every single day. Now we've, you know, there's little tweaks that we make, yeah. but for the most part, it's been a really good, solid, dependable reel. The people that, in our store, fishstrong.com, you guys, we have both of these reels in our store to go check out, but we've sold hundreds of these reels. Yep. We have had zero concerns or complaints. Some people have said, this is a pretty slick reel. It's a, it's a, you know, gem. I mean, I, mean, I, I think more people should know about this product because at that $200 price point, it does everything Everything you can want it to do from inshore, near shore, offshore. I've been super impressed with it. Guys, this is the BG and the BGMQ. If you have any questions about these reels, if you've used either of these reels, let us know in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you guys. Hope you like them. It's pretty awesome. I love hanging out with you, Justin. Thank you, you always so ask much, such Mark. good questions and you're so you know thorough on everything you talk about. You really are. I really appreciate you. No man. problem, dude. Thank you guys. We'll see you out there. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know we are the best inshore fishing club in America. We teach you how to find and catch all kinds of inshore game fish you're gonna save a ton of money on your tackle and you'll meet a bunch of awesome new fishing friends so if that sounds like something for you head on over to saltstrong.com and we will see you in the insider family soon